welcome to the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden. My name is Kelly Norris, I'm the Director of Horticulture and Education, and in about five minutes at the top of the hour, we're going to take you on a botanical tour, maybe brighten up your day a little bit. It's kind of gray and snowy here in central Iowa, but it's pretty warm and tropical inside the conservatory here at the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden. So at about three o'clock, we'll get started with the tour. I hope you join us then. Thanks so much. back to the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden. My name is Kelly Norris, the Director of Horticulture and Education, and we want to say thank you, first of all, to all of you joining us for this little Iowa culture coffee break this afternoon. Uh, we really want to say thank you to the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs for inviting us and the chance to do this. It's going to be shared on their Facebook stream as well as ours. And we're going to spend a few minutes here just talking a little bit about what's growing on here in the conservatory. We've been trying over the last uh, several weeks of COVID-19 closure to give you little insights into what's happening here at the Botanical Garden. We are indeed closed to the public. Uh, a skeleton crew of uh, diligent horticulturists have been here making sure that the plants and the gardens are alive and healthy and thriving so that we can invite you back to the building, uh, hopefully sooner than later, uh, we'll be able to have a great garden experience, uh, which you'll be able to find refuge in uh, and, and, and find a, a space to contemplate and maybe just relax and have some peace Beyond all of that, we can take you on a virtual tour today and show you some of the great things that are happening here. We had fully intended to spend some time in the outdoor gardens because it's an awful shame that it's spring outside, or it's mostly spring. Today, maybe not quite so much in Central Iowa. And we were really hoping to show you some of the wonderful bulbs and all of the little glimmers of hope that are emerging in the garden. But it's snowing again, so we thought we'd keep this up a very conservatory, warm, and tropical kind of tour. Uh, today. So I'm going to slide over here. David Regan, our assistant director of the guest experience, uh, is
is, is acting as my cameraman today, kind of following me around. So we're going to take a look up here on our balcony, first of all. A lot of you, I know, love the balcony. It's kind of a secret place. I think not all that many people end up coming up here maybe to, uh, as part of their visit when they, when they come. But there are a lot of people that, that have, this is their kind of secret special place to maybe grab a chair or a table and uh, pop their laptop out and maybe do some homework or, or do some writing. It's a great space to sort of take in the whole view. I think David was giving you some sort of overview shots while we, we teed up this uh, Facebook Live event. But there are some great container garden galleries over there up here. And I want to show you some of those now. You know, one of the things we do here at the Botanical Garden is we curate really what we like to call the, the horticultural flora of our times. And so we're really interested in new plants in new varieties that have come into horticulture, maybe uh, through traditional plant breeding or maybe even from wild places uh, or far-flung locations that just haven't made it into the greater horticultural marketplace yet. We like to evaluate those, we like to study those, we like to grow them and learn about them so that we can teach you about them and share them and those experiences uh, so that your gardening experience can be better and more informed. And so one of the features that we've been playing with up here in the last couple of growing seasons is a new group of plants called mangaves and they are uh, these really fabulous plants. We've got several of them up here. Uh, they kind of look like agaves, right? And half of their parentage is really uh, uh, the genus agave. But the interesting thing is that although they look like succulents and really act like succulents, in fact, you can sort of treat them just uh, uh, like any other old plant. They're not particularly uh, uh, sensitive to uh, needing a really dry soil, so we, we actually grow them with a whole host of other plants. We are selling some of these at our Spring Garden Festival, which of course is canceled in person this year, but we will be announcing here uh, in the coming weeks uh, an online version, an e-commerce version of the Spring Garden Festival plant sale. So stay tuned for that because we have over 400 different kinds of plants in that festival, including several of the varieties of mangaves that we're going to show you today. So they're just a lot of fun to play with. They end up becoming uh, these great container plants. Of course, they're not hardy here in Iowa, but the thing I want to show you when we go over to the other gallery is just how fast they grow. The plants that you see here and that you'll see here in just a minute are only really about a year and a half old and they, they grow they just they, it's so incredibly fast. Uh, from the little plugs that we just got in a couple of weeks ago, they will size up in a single growing season um, to be 12 or more inches across. I mean, they're just wired for speed. Uh, really, really fun plants to, to, to sort of liven up your container garden schemes. There's over 40 different varieties out there that's called the Mad About Mangave Collection, and we've been really lucky to partner with the breeders of Walters Gardens to bring all of those varieties here to the town of the garden to really evaluate and enjoy, and we kind of love them all. But I want to have David zoom in here for something kind of ultra cool and special. At the Botanical Garden, uh, we like to show off the geeky things here. And this is, in fact, a, a really wonderful salvia from South America. This is salvia discolor. And, in fact, I wish you could reach through your screen and feel it with me. It's sticky. It has these kind of white, fuzzy undersides. But on the stems, they have this kind of sap of sorts that's, you know, maybe used for catching insects or, or just sort of warding off things in the wild that might have a nibble of it. But it's black flowered. It's this wonderful, uh, again, South American native, native to uh, Bolivia and Colombia, salvia discolor. And it typically flowers here in the conservatory in what would be our winter. The thing you have to remember about the conservatory here in Des Moines, Iowa, is that it's, even though it's a, a controlled space and we have you know, heat and all this kind of stuff that, that is preserving the artificial nature of this controlled environment all year long, we're still in northern latitude. And so as our days start to get longer outside, it really becomes a much more amenable environment inside for so many tropical plants that are used to just much longer days uh, throughout the course of the year than we can give them uh, without significant artificial lighting here in Des Moines. So there is kind of a, a rush of flowering that happens at the end of the winter into the early spring uh, here in the conservatory of things that are just finally getting enough uh, uh, hours uh, of light a day to bloom, including another tiny little thing up here. Sometimes we like to plant tiny flowers because it helps you slow down and take a look at what's going on. This is actually a really fun species of gomfrina. This is called gomfrina decumbens. Uh, tiny little, almost like that, like the nerds candy, right? Just at the end of those stems. It's just about to explode. You may think, gosh, that doesn't look all that interesting. But when you see this entire plant 
explode in those little nerd candy-like flowers. It's just this dazzling display uh, that's uh, joining uh, the yuccas and the mangaves and, uh, and all sorts of other kind of succulenty textures that are happening up here. Let's go over by the elevator and take a look at another one of these galleries because it uses uh, Mad About Mangave varieties, different ones than you've just seen here, and it looks totally different because there's, there's a whole different assortment of varieties over here. I'm not mic'd up, so I'm going to try and talk as loud as I can and avoid any intentional or unintentional bloopers for that matter. We'll get a shot of the whole grouping of them here too, but we see a whole different palette of colors, cherries and kind of blueberry colors and, and dark amethysts and almost kind of metallic shades coming through in this collection. Uh, zooming in right now on a Manfreda called Cherry Chocolate Chip, which has this really fun splattered variegation pattern and this kind of curvy wavy edge uh, and despite the fact that these look kind of sharp they're actually the leaves are kind of rubbery uh, it's sort of strange they, they, they sort of um, belie their true nature just a little bit like that my personal favorite is a variety called lavender lady just not only because of its shape but because of its color it's just so alluring and just so perfect it's like you've drawn it uh, into a perfect rosette like that. Can you tell we're having fun? We just love these plants. This is, uh, there's a lot of eucalyptus up here as well too. Uh, yeah, great plants, uh, really important from a, a study of plant evolution, uh, plants that have been on the planet, uh, or their descendants at least, for a very long period of time. Uh, we just love them because they, they have a great sort of textural quality. Uh, there's probably three or four different species featured here uh, that have been growing in these pots now for probably a year, year and a half. Uh, of course, eucalyptus are really easy to propagate uh, from stem cuttings, and many of the species have a sap that has a gum-like quality, and so it's used uh, in a lot of, for a lot of different purposes, uh, uh, both uh, for stabilizing plastics and uh, food additives and, and all sorts of other things. Plants are useful, right? And so we feature here at the Botanical Garden, indoors and out, almost 3,500 different kinds of plants right now, which is, uh, which is pretty good for a, a relatively young institutional effort. Uh, stop here and take a look. David is zooming in on a really great historic plant here called Tabernay Montana de Vericata. This is uh, actually a, a descendant of a plant that was uh, here in the conservatory when the nonprofit took over in 2012. It's been part of the collection uh, uh, really I think probably from almost the very early days of the conservatory. So it's beautiful semi-double white flowers, super shiny leaves like this. They tend to flower kind of off and on throughout the year but especially again through kind of the winter, the late winter into the spring. I was mentioning earlier, as so we start to get these longer days that just really cue a lot of the uh, plant behavior in here uh, with, with the, the longer, longer days. So, this palm is called a Bismarck palm, um, and this uh, Bismarckia nobilis uh, was uh, a fairly small tree when we planted it maybe five or six years ago. This is a rather a robust palm. If you've ever spent any time in Southern California, you've certainly seen uh, these dominating uh, the skies because they can get quite large. We expect this to gain some size ultimately. We chose it here because of its kind of architectural nature. Stunning silver, blue green leaves. Uh, this was maybe only about six feet tall. I'm six one when we planted it. It's easily double that now in mean, just a period of about five years. So it's pretty robust. But pretty fast growing. Let's take a look at some flowers because, you know, we all just need some color right now. I would show you daffodils outside in this shade, but in lieu of the fact that it's snowing and cold, I'm going to show you Alamanda cathartica, this beautiful yellow trumpet. Uh, these just, this flower is really all year long. We've got several of them around the conservatory. 
observatory, but in this middle bed here, right as you come in the door, uh, it's a nice place to always just uh, see sunny yellow flowers that are happy and walking into the observatory. Kind of sort of beckon you to go down the path and sort of take a look at what comes. We're always editing in here, right? Part of the magic of making gardens is, is, is always moving them along and moving them forward. The picture is never really done. The painting is never really finished. So we always are, are planting and editing and, and, and sort of finding the, finding the art in our midst. And so uh, Aaron's been doing some work down here with uh, some of these different vignettes that we've been uh, uh, fussing with all winter long. We've got some uh, great things that have just come out of the greenhouse. That back there, that splattered variegated leaf, is an alocasia. It's effectively a type of elephant ear called Okinawa silver, this sort of splash variety that's there. It's just really exotic and really fun. You know, aeroids, that group, that family that includes alocasias and colocasias and philodendrons and all of these uh, plants that are kind of the rage right now, uh, particularly with young people. We've got a great, we've got a great collection of them. There's more to come out actually that haven't really been on display uh, at all yet. So we're excited to show people that. Stay tuned. Always something new coming out here, especially in 2020. So we've got a lot of great aeroids, including uh, that location back there as well, too. Uh, we'll kind of uh, we'll make the loop here through the center uh, of the conservatory and maybe end up over by the, uh, the, the desert garden here in just a bit. I, I'm on, I may be on a variegated plant kick today. I've got a couple of the variegated things in mind that I want to show you today. And when we first say variegated, we're talking about that kind of splashy plaid pattern of white or silver or cream on an otherwise green leaf. One of the things we're always trying to do here in the conservatory as well, and I think this vignette is really starting to sort of tell this story, is we're really trying to create kind of this layered community structure of our planting, as much as we do outside in a very kind of ecologically focused way. Uh, we really want to understand how plants grow together. It's, it's all well and great that each of these sewer plants has a story and a name, and, uh, and, for, and for a lifelong plant geek, I can point them out and I can tell you all about them, and that's all fine. But what's more interesting for us is how they come together to form uh, these sort of rich communities uh, of plants, uh, these sort of dynamic tapestries of sorts that not only have an aesthetic quality or ornamental story to tell, but also have a story about plant ecology, how plants grow, and sort of social lives of plants. And so in the way that we practice that kind of three-dimensional layered approach to planting outside, uh, we really have tried to incorporate that over the time uh, that we've been here into the conservatory plantings as well, uh, because of course the tropics are the most diverse uh, parts of the world, and so the amount of plant diversity uh, that we can layer into this uh, really this garden under glass here in Des Moines is really quite profound. And so uh, again, I'll name check Aaron Harpold, our assistant director of horticulture, who's, who's been kind of uh, our leader in the conservatory for the past several years, uh, has really, I, I think, done a, a fine job of really trying to translate those layers of native plant ecology uh, into. Uh, into the guest experience. So David's panning out there to show you the bananas. We've, we've done a little pruning on the bananas this week because obviously in an in a artificial tropical environment like this, our bananas do grow fast. And they are handsome plants. They certainly form a very charismatic texture in our canopy. But, you know, with the limitations of the architecture of the building, we do have to ultimately manage the size of which some plants like bananas and even palms can ultimately get in our conservatory. So Aaron's been doing a little thinning. I walked through just yesterday and I thought, this area seems a little lighter. And in fact, it's because we've thinned out the uh, banana canopy a little bit here just over the entrance to the North Gallery. Uh, we've also done some thinning on our heliconia, which I think we'll see if we can swing around and uh, get a shot of as well too, but this is the nature of horticulture, right? There, things are always changing. Our, our, our hope is that every time you visit the Botanical Garden, there's something new and different about the experience. There's something new that you see, even, of, even though you know, a lot of these plants are here, you know, obviously for a very long period of time. Uh, but we, we love celebrating that ephemerality in gardens and really celebrating that, that motion and that, uh, that sort of fleeting nature sometimes of plants, uh, even in a managed and relatively controlled environment. So let's come around and take a look at that little county. I think there's still one really nice flower. There it is. I'll get my right up there. It's super exotic. Just absolutely stunningly charismatic plant. Uh, you know, 
what caption could I say that that, that photo, that view alone, doesn't say for itself? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, again, we have actually a number of Meliconias in the conservatory, but uh, uh, this is obviously one of maybe the more precarious of them in terms of its overall size and structure. And, uh, and so, you know, it's such a standout in those kind of shades of red. Let's end over here at the Desert Garden as we kind of wrap our time together. You know, as we're uh, all kind of working through this closure and uh, this sort of slow period of slowing down in our society with uh, the coronavirus. We're really doing as much as we can to try and share the garden with you on social media platforms with opportunities like this. If you check out our website at dmbotanicalgarden.com, there's a free resources section up there, uh, activities for kids. Uh, we know a lot, of, a lot of families are home and doing homeschooling now and are certainly looking for ways to occupy and inspire and enlighten their children. And so there's resources up there as well too. Maybe what is most exciting, if there is some exciting and positive news about this whole experience, is that more of you are gardening for the first time this year, or maybe deep, diving deeper into gardening for the first time. And we want you to be successful. Uh, that, that, of course, is uh, the underlying passion of all of us here for the town of the garden. So if you're, if you're trying something new, if you're growing something new for the first time, or if you've got questions about something, reach out to us uh, here on Facebook via Facebook Messenger, or drop us an email uh, on our info box, uh, from the link on our website. Uh, Instagram works as well, too. We're here uh, to answer those questions and to be as helpful as we can. Uh, and of course, we're here to provide plants for you as well, too. And as I said earlier in the spot uh, if we have a digital plant set up an e-commerce plant cell coming together uh, as a replacement of sorts to spring garden festival which is unfortunately canceled due to uh, the coronavirus pandemic and so uh, we do want to be able to provide you those plants we've got 400 different kinds of things many of which we've grown here at the town garden uh, we'll be launching on our website in the coming weeks so we'll be hearing a lot more about that uh, but as we, we walk out here together today i'll let david just kind of pan around and sort of show you uh, some of the great textures and things that are happening here uh, with the agaves. As I mentioned, as we kind of come into this season of longer days with spring arriving outdoors, there's always seems to be a, a new flush of, uh, of growth, a sort of a patina of a new growing season that comes to the conservatory, even though it's, uh, it's a growing season 365 days of the year in here. Uh, so uh, we cannot wait really to share the garden with you again in person uh, very soon, and we hope to see you, in fact, uh, here at the Greater Atlanta Town very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching today, and happy growing and happy garden.